Hi everybody, welcome, welcome back for most of you uh, to Open Security Summit training week, week two. And this is a very, very interactive session on incident response. We're going to be uh, talk, walking and working through a scenario all together and in, in separate groups as different stakeholders. Um, if you're new to the Security Summit, Open Security Summit, well, this is a very collaborative environment. It usually happens on site, but uh, this year we're all virtual and which also enabled us to go global. Uh, there's no question that this will require your participation because without it, it this session will be quite worthless. Um, uh, do have we will have lots of questions to each other. We will be um, solutionizing what we should be doing with the information we get from the scenario. Uh, the session is recorded and everything that supports the session, um, any, any information we share between us in the chat and um, anything that's useful will be also put on the website later. Check back in a week or two, I will say. And respect is the big thing. Um, well, we are, we are from many diverse backgrounds here and we all respect each other because we need each other. So this community won't survive without the diversity. OSS 2020 is our hashtag this year. Uh, use it generously and tell us and tell the world uh, what you think about the sessions you've been so far, what, what, what we have been doing good, what we've been doing bad, and what do you want to see more of? Um, I will also share our a link to the Slack uh, in the chat window in a minute. Um, yeah, that's it for me as a quick, quick welcome. And here we have our main organizer for the day, uh, Ben, myself, James, Wallaby, and Dennis. And Tedwick as well supporting us in this um, and welcome to all of the other guests james take us away okay so uh, we're doing an experimental very experimental uh, tabletop scenario planning testing scenario snappy name there basically we've got a scenario uh, people will be split into different teams with different piece of of information to work with. We'll have a moderator in with each team. They are there to provide a back channel so that we can keep the events synchronized between the different teams. You'll be in that room for about 20 minutes to work with the information you've got. Feel free to ask the moderator for extra information to tell them you want to try particular things uh, and we'll find a way to make it work. And the scenario is related to a breach at an entirely fictional company that definitely doesn't have any real world parallels uh, called Acme. They are a software as a service company. They provide a management layer and reporting dashboard layer across AWS, Office 365 and Azure for various SMEs. They're just about to go into their first funding round. They're a fairly mature startup, about 50 people in the company. Uh, they've been running for a few years. Many of the people who built the technology platform are still in there. So that should give you an idea about them. That, I think, is all I can say without giving at least some of the teams information that uh, they won't necessarily get straight away. So the teams we will be looking at will be the red team. Uh, who will be the attacking group, the blue team, who obviously will be the security operations internal uh, management, who are management, and the voice of the customer, which is the customer user group. And they've noticed something and reported it in, and that will drop in right at the beginning. So yes, it will be about 20 minute rounds in the breakout rooms, then 10 minutes to just get a heartbeat, synchronize everything, link everything up. Uh, Dida's just shared out the architecture diagram, very high level of how the solution works. And shall I share the uh, cards we made as well? Uh, I think if we do those in the breakout rooms because they okay. have information about what's going on. 
Okay, let me start creating the rooms. So we have four rooms. Yep, it has yep. automatically assigned uh, each one. So this will be management because it has been. I will mute myself so that you don't. While Dido's creating the rooms, are there any questions about how this is going to work or potentially not work? or anything else. Is it worth saying, James, we're going to just randomly allocate people to the room? So, you know, so everyone can yep. participate. So you, know, you may not be in the place you're normally comfortable with, but it'd be great to get your participation. Yeah, so for those of you who are just receiving a uh, promotion to management or development, congratulations. For those of you who've just become cyber criminals, well, you were asking for it. And you will find out when you drop into the rooms. It won't affect your CV. In the meantime, while I'm doing this, you can go through the uh, architecture diagram if you want. That might help people because they can see uh, more about. Can we screen share it so we can throw it up? Um, yeah, I think I can. Yep. This obviously won't mean much to management. It's got more than seven boxes. Also, this was a 10 minute technical design I threw together, so don't expect perfect accuracy out of it. Um, given that you're the uh, author and owner of it, James, you want to just quickly run through the structure just to keep it a bit more level of detail on it? Yeah, the idea is you've got the uh, user identity and access management store, which is separate to the Azure AD store uh, and is controlled by Acme. There may or may not be security flaws in there. We'll find out. Then there's the management portal, which talks to that store. Within that store, you've got various different things. Um, sorry, I just need to jump onto a different call for one minute. <laughs> okay. I will be opening the rooms now. Okay, so we can join the rooms. Yeah, go teams. Okay, so we have 20 minutes, so we shall get, get on with it. So, the oh, you're in this room as well, Dida? I'm, I'm in this room, yes. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. our motivation is the customers. Customer comes first. We are here to um, like protect ourselves and the customers. Uh, mm -hmm. The brief we have been given is that one of the user groups, one of our savvy customers, mm. have reported suspicious activity. And they pulled the plug on their integration with our uh, um, product. So they called us saying, OK, there was some, something dodgy going on, and we stopped using your service. You should do something about it. This is right. what we were given. Right. Uh, we have tools, the social, social and business tools. Okay, we have the legal team. Woo, great. Uh, mm -hmm. We can use press releases uh, when mm -hmm. we come to that point. Uh, we can use marketing, word of mouth, internal monitoring, and technical resources. Quite mm -hmm. a powerful uh, group, actually. Yeah, yeah. But we come from variable levels of um, capabilities. Okay. So where do we start? Um, we've told the we've told the company that why we're not using them. I mean, the the point of this is to just think about how it affects us. Is that right? And what we're going to do about it? So yeah, with the point. Uh, firstly is to understand what is really happening because right. um, well it could be something related to how, how much do we trust these customers first first of all it's like do they know what they're talking about can it be something else well, uh, I, I, you mean our own group 
so we the are customer the group. Are we, are we the customer? We're the customers. So we are not the customer, but we are the people who the customer has um, contacted, like their account manager. Mm -hmm. So they called us saying there's something fishy going on here. We stopped using your services. You should get this checked out. So it's now up to us what to uh, do next. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to want to find out first what the customer actually knows. Um, what, you know, if we can, just find out what happened. What was the situation? You know, what were they doing um, when that happened? Um, yep, I will start taking notes here. Um, yeah, what was the situation? What did you see, dear mm. customer? For, so first we identify the problem. You know, that's the, the main thing to do to begin with. So whatever can lead to that. Um, if we find, well, let's see, what, what do they say when we ask them about that? Um, when we ask them what happened? So they say, yeah, we saw some uh, admin activity that we didn't do. Some, there were some strange um, un, un, unknown activities that our admins didn't perform. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Uh, because these guys have like, um, when I say these guys, us are, as a company, we provide this uh, through an admin console. So for each customer, each customer has an admin in their own user group to this uh, admin console and they have users where they manage because this is a, a identity service provider. So we integrate with their AD or um, whatever uh, platform they use and we provide SSO. And what you're saying is that someone else had was accessing um, their admin panel or using admin rights that um, yes so that's what this to. customer is saying us so what 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 else can we do what else are we looking for and what do we do from this point i would check with our internal teams as well are they seeing something like that mm -hmm. Is there anything that we've been tracking or others um, have been tracking as far as um, bugs or flaws or breaches um, of information? Is there anything out there that we can uh, get information about that's already out about this type of system that we're using? Mm -hmm. Sorry, can you say that one again? I was taking note. I was distracted. Yeah, basically what, what information is available, what's the knowledge base show, that kind of thing. And at this point, we, we could assume this is not a very cooperative customer as well, so they might not be giving us more information. They just said, yeah, go figure it out, there's something wrong. You guys mm. are not providing a secure service doing their due diligence. So they should have done their due diligence on us before using. Mm -hmm. I would say, okay, what info is available from our SOC team? Yeah. Have they seen any suspicious activity? What do they we see? would run, wouldn't we? I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm, it's all a bit new to me. So not very helpful. No, you could have been in no, this situation good. in real life, like an incident happens and you happen to be um, in this group of people who had to handle it. So it's just brainstorming, basically. No, I understand that. It's just, um, 
lack of experience of being in security or even thinking about security that works. I'll give you a little hint that helps me. Um, so CompT is troubleshooting model, just kind of adapted for security, kind of helps to helps to guide you know a little bit of an approach in that direction. Um, so like identifying the symptoms, what you know, what do we know? How like we know that they were using admin. Um, you know, an admin role, but how were they doing it? Um, like, what did they actually do? What were they looking for? What were they um, paying attention to? You know, that kind of thing. Just I identifying really um, things as though it were kind of troubleshooting in a sense. Yeah. What did you call it? CompTIA's what? CompTIA. Come to a troubleshooting model. Uh, okay. I mean, it's 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 pretty basic, you know. Identify the problem, research the knowledge base, establish a theory of probable cause, test the theory, that kind of thing. But along the way, it, it's broken down into a little bit more detail, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And it, it it helps think a little bit about okay, so how do I know what actually happened? Um, they're saying someone was doing this. Well, what can I see that shows me that? What was changed? Um, right. You know, just logs, kind of logs, basically. We're looking for logs for, for that customer and their admins. We're looking for logs. We're looking for settings that may have been changed, um, you know, that are not the default and not what the customer was trying to have set up or would be trying to have set up. Um, yeah, that will be in the logs as well. Settings changed. Right. Hmm. So. And the press releases, I mean, that would be for sure, you know, researching the knowledge base, looking at, okay, are there any exploits on this type of system um, that have been, you know, that people know about? Are there any security vulnerabilities that have been introduced to the system due to updates or due to not updating um, versions all that checking all that. I think a more important thing is um, monitoring you know monitoring for continued use um, seeing if any other accounts are affected so I've talked with the SOC team they told me they've seen a Ukrainian IP address logging on to the admin uh, admin account of that customer. Uh, oh, so we can do stuff, not just talk about it here. Did you just check with the SOC team? Yeah. Okay. I'm actually looking for notes. So Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, so there is a Ukrainian IP address uh, that has logged on to that uh, admin account. Okay. Then we are with a customer group. I keep forgetting. I also how oh, we're I not the I'm, red team. We're not the blue team. We're the customer. Some group. more news, which is not related to. Uh, what the customers told us, but the blue team we have, uh, they, they're they seeing a DOS attack oh. on the brochureware site, which is like not the main site, it's static site, but they're seeing it being like defaced um, and DOS down. Okay, not good. So we are really targeted. We are under attack, yeah. So Ukraine, do we have attribution though? No, it's just an IP. That's. Uh, but I do suggest we go back to the customer and ask more questions now that we know more. Um, I'll do but that. We need, don't we need to like? I don't know if we need to ask them to not broadcast it, or do we ask them to? Do we ask them to not say anything? We'll say something. Yeah, that too. Because really, it's really a real attack. Really good point. We think. Mm. 
tell the customer to keep it <laughs> confidential? Which is a bit, yeah. Do we have an end? I mean, an NDA? I don't know. There are yeah, that's something to ask our French legal team. What is what does our uh, contract look like with with this customer? Mm -hmm. And then we do tell them, we ask them. Let's ask them um, about did they were they able to attribute this to a single event? Mm. So in in terms of internal monitoring, then what um, what can we do? So th that team is really, really busy on the DOS attack. They're, they're trying to figure out what's happening there. They're not really able to, uh, because this is a startup, they, there aren't many people to help us internally. Oh, yes. So um, I suggest, I do suspect, if this is a really targeted attack, it might have been that this customer might have been targeted or spearfished. Oh. Uh, by these attackers, whoever they are. So I do want to have this conversation with the customer group, uh, with their maybe CTO or whoever, who would be best to contact. Mm. Okay, I contacted their CISO. CTO, okay. Which is the same thing as CTO because this is also a medium sized company, the customer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's talk with their SOC team or their external SOC team. What does it mean, motivation, self interest, protect our own business and customers? Mm -hmm. What does that exactly mean? Yeah, that's the motivation of this customer group. Right. Yeah. So IT's motivation would be to keep the systems up, for example. But our, mm. we are more concerned about what the customer protecting the business. Yeah. Customers. Yeah. Right. So mm. they they started looking into it, but it might take some time. So yeah, we're gonna want to isolate. Um, we're going to want to isolate it so that it's disconnected from uh, from the actual customer so that none of their data is going to be breached. Yeah, we should tell that to um, our um, cyber team. Yeah, I'm wondering if we're the first people to hear about it because the customer said they're pulling the plug, I wondered. Um, To hear about the attack, you know, or we, I'm just wondering. That's a good question. What do you mean? Are we the first person to the first um, sort of avenue of finding out about the attack? Is that somebody just disconnected from us and said you're under attack? Do you know what I mean? Or is mm -hmm. it that our our blue team? No, they weren't aware of it until we told them about right. it. Ah, uh, that's what I, that's what I was trying to find out. Sorry, I didn't express mm -hmm. myself well. No, 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 it's it's fine. Um, yeah. So we told them, but they they told us that they're too busy with this DOS tank now. So we were quite a bit on our own to deal with this as the customer group. So okay. we need to keep the customer happy until we can get uh, right. some of our internal teams to work on it. So, so I don't know who else is in there. I know you, d -Dub. I don't know the other guy. What's your Wallaby. name? Wallaby. W Wallaby? Yep, that'd be it. Okay, Wallaby. <laughs> yeah, you're right um, that we've got to disconnect from our um, database, the database. So somehow we've got to do that, don't we? Um, I think that, that, that point's good. Um, we also want to make sure to continue monitoring this because, um, well, I mean, do we want to continue monitoring, monitoring this? We want to shut it down. 
Yeah, we sh we would. Should we shut what down? Um, Our service to the customer. Not to the customer, but make sure to to boot the to user group. The attacker. Do we want to do we want to monitor what they're doing, or do we want to? Uh, I guess that's not that's not our. Hmm. Our remit. We've got, to, but we've got to protect our customer and our business. Agreed. Yeah. What I was saying is, if we if we switch, how can we make it so that their information is disconnected um, from that um, from the attacker? How can we make it so that the attacker can't gain any more access or? Continuing. Um. Hmm. Okay, we have one minute to go back to the room. And I think we have um, done a good job so far because uh, we do need uh, other teams and what Involved. they're doing, yeah, their information. They will immediately let our side know. They may be busy, but we did let them know what the, what they, what was going on. But yeah, are we sure? Are we sure it's a legitimate attack? How do we? Looks like it. It looks like it. And our first, our first duty is to protect. Yeah, data. isolate the contaminants. We don't want to be hit with a big um, fine by mm -hmm. the ICO because we didn't do anything. So our first duty is to, to try to mitigate that attack, against that attack. Even, even though um, social media and, um, and so on might kill us, but we don't want the financial consequences Maybe also to pull their stuff off of the uh, dark web if we're able to, to be able to further mitigate the uh, the issues that they would be facing. Do we say something on social media? We don't, or we do. I never know whether they do. It seems that nobody ever finds out until uh, months, months, m many months later. I mean. We may want to wait till the issue is more resolved and we've gone over the things with the rest of the team. I'm not sure. Mm. So then we have to have a, a, a some sort of um, emergency meeting. And contact legal, be, yeah. Yeah. There has to be an immediate response because it's about risk, mitigating risk against the risk. Um, I don't know. Let us know. Here Jeez we go. Woo. Wow, that was quite intense. <laughs> okay. So I, I don't know what you want to do, Dino. Should we just do a I can give you a thirty second read back of where the management team got to and then we could go okay. I guess we, Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could go through each of the rooms then. So uh, as a group we decided the first thing we were gonna do is uh, talk to the technologists and say the operations guys and say First of all, can we restore the affected from backups, the affected S3 stores, or are they completely? First, Ben, Ben, what, what information were you given? Uh, well, we just said we just knew that there were a few customers that have been breached, but and we've been talked by the customer group. We haven't had anything back from the the technologist as yet. Okay. Okay. Um, so we were just uh, in a management huddle. We said, um, first of all, let's let's. Um, Brief the technologists to say first of all, can we can we uh, recover the customers that are in uh, have been breached, and secondly, um, can we you know what do we do to protect further breaches? Can we cut off access to the portal? What's the impact on customers if we do that? The second thing we said we need to do was prepare a communication to customers, and the priority customers, the the main revenue customers, we handle um, uh, directly, and then we do a bulletin out to everybody else. Um, we said we'd look at the business impact as a third priority, which is to say, are we in breach of SLA? What's our, our legal bill going to be? Are we going to get um, hit with, with other fees? Um, then we, uh, we need to think about how we contact the authorities. And the final thing is prepare a statement for a press release so that 
um, at the point this becomes public, we've got a way of dealing with that. Mm, and we, we said that in our in our sessions, as we were as we were responding to this, we worked out that some of the customer salespeople hadn't read the security policies, and we had some gaps in our documentation. So we made a note for uh, re the review post instant that we need to go back and make sure everyone's gone through the training. Mm -hmm. Wow, very good. Can we yeah. go next as the customer group because we are oh, very cool. pretty pretty aligned to what Ben has said. Mm -hmm. uh, the brief we have been given is that a customer of ours told us uh, called us and said they had some suspicious activity and they had um, stopped using our product basically because and they told us to fix it. They they they're quite sure there's something wrong in our on our side. So we tried to get more involvement from them, but initially they weren't very collaborative. They were quite pissed. Uh, pissed off, I mean. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> we went to our soft team saying, are you seeing anything? Uh, we, we got this information from uh, from the customer, but do you see anything? And um, we, they checked the logs and stuff. Um, we, in, we found out there was a Ukrainian IP address that was logged onto the admin account of the customer. And also, we wanted to learn more and try to isolate the incident with our SOC team, but they were they told us they were too busy trying to uh, deal with this um, DOS, DOS attack. Okay. So, our, currently, we are talking with the legal team to understand what the contracts uh, require us to do. And we're trying to go back to the customer to get more information from them because we suspect there might be a spear phishing because we, we are targeted in this moment. We think it might have been a real spear phishing um, attack via some of our customers. So we were just getting ready to uh, talk talk with them. Oh, oh, sorry, we have talked with their CISO, who is also the CTO, uh, and they, they're going to do some... Um, Analysis their side because they are a medium-sized company as well. So. Okay. Okay. So you, you, you recording this, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, recording. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool update. This is cool. Okay. Um, so I'll give the blue team update, and then Dennis, it's all over to you. Uh, obviously, blue team have been dealing with, as you'd expect, the DDoS attack against the company website, which is measured and alerted on the scene. And as per KPIs, uh, quick instant response is what we're geared towards. So we've been dealing with that. There's not been any steer to do anything different from management. So we're sticking with that for now. And there will be recommendations on how to better protect the uh, website from DDoS attacks in the future coming out of this instant. Cool, and uh, I can confirm that the Ukraine IP address is one of ours, and uh, that we're doing other things. Mm. So you are the attacker? Well, I'm re we represent the attacker, right? Okay. <laughs> Evil yeah, so, <laughs> so, so I, I can confirm that you know we, we from our team, you know, we we're the ones who started the Nello service, and that IP address is is ours. And that's as far as I'll go at this moment in time. Okay. Hi, I'm from the blue team. Uh, as I said to James, uh, for the DDoS attack, uh, I suggest to, to shut down the, some of my our DNS server if, uh, if the attack are aiming directly to specific DNS address. And uh, for our scenario, if we have uh, multiple DNS server in our uh, company. Okay. Okay. So while we're all in this room, um, do any of the teams want to pass a message or pass actions to other teams before we break out again and do next steps? Yeah, so my, from a business point of view, my actions are, can you uh, check the ones we know are affected? Can we restore their data or is that ransomware? Uh, you're, you're going to have to go into more detail. All we got to, as blue team was there's a DDoS attack going on and then someone asked about a Ukrainian IP address logged into a customer server. Okay. I don't think we, uh, Ben, I don't think we got to the ransomware part yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and has, has the attackers contacted us or do we know nothing about them so far? 
No, we haven't contacted you. That was not. Uh, actually, that's one question that I'll take to the team. Uh, do we contact you in the next round? So we'll take that as a question for us. Hmm. Okay. And, that, and we can also add to the mix that uh, the denial of service, uh, you are so uh, for this first version of denial of service, uh, the countermeasures are being effective, i.e. The, the, the effectiveness of the denial of service is going down because of, for example, those countermeasures of addressing the DNS routing, etc. cetera. Cool. And I guess as a customer group, uh, we do have some skills about marketing. I, we will uh, help you, Ben, um, with, uh, with the stuff. I'm sorry. I okay. paused the um, recording for a second. I by mistake. Right. So for those what of us... NDA? We're going to check it. So the, the contract has um, confidentiality clauses, but no NDA. And That's for right. the... For the blue team, the SOC team, we as a team have just been directed to drop the DDoS response and look into this instant of a Ukrainian IP address. So next time we go into the breakout room, we'll uh, start digging into that unless you decide the DDoS is actually a higher priority. And shall we merge the management and uh, customer groups? It seems like we should work together. We will be helping each other. So shall yeah. we join one, one breakout room and that makes, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what we said in the management team is we were going to uh, basically, you know, face off to the customers and then give the technology guys some space to respond. That I think makes sense. Actually, there's, all, there's only a couple of us in the attackers. If anybody wants to join that party, you're more than welcome. <laughs> you're on your own, dude. <laughs> no, 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 there's a couple of them, but we need to have a couple more. Okay. No, you can you can put me over there if you want. Oh, right, cool. And by the way, yeah, I mean, I'm happy you know, to join there. If anybody wants to join a different room, right, or, or move around, you know, just yeah. ask Dida, right? She can she can assign yeah. or, or James, probably. You guys can move them around, right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, D Dida can move people around. I I can only stare hopelessly at the uh, <laughs> list of people. So we're gonna we're gonna join our rooms again now, then. Yes, let's do that. Uh, the management team, it will take me some time to get you all to the customer team, but I will get you all. Perfect. Waiting, uh, ready and waiting for our next round. Cool, let's do it. <laughs> this is good. All right. Yeah. Anyone else uh, been actually through a real scenario like this? It's pretty scary when it happens. I bet. Mm. Yeah. No. I have uh, I have faced several times that uh, our product has some leaks and some customers were impacted and always uh, we were, because uh, we were asking if they are big or small and uh, what we should do and so on. So I have faced some uh, this not this type. This uh, this is this sounds more complex. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's quite. I think it's quite good, um, to be honest. Uh, I'm just going to ask. I'm, what I'm just going to do is quickly ask uh, uh, if they've got any update on whether we can restore or not. Uh, restore what? Well, the, so let's assume that we we uh, that we've found that there's some uh, that there's some uh, people have lost some data that we can't get to, um, or we've had a ransomware. Uh, uh, attack you know that this is now at least on one customer so we what the first thing we do is um if we can check to see whether we can restore so we're going to wait i've asked the i've just done a message to say to the the blue team can we can we restore if there is a problem and we'll see what happens um in the meantime while we're waiting for that response we talked about the next thing we were going to do is being um how are we going to deal with the there the, there's a communication to the staff to say can we uh, can we restore this this lost account? And secondly, how do we cut off other people? Uh, other people. So let's have a discussion about um, actually putting that into action. So we've got 100 customers, of which five are affected. We think at the moment we don't know how many are affected. What's the first thing we should do? What do, what do people think? So this is. Are we contacting customers or internal customers? Who, who are we con contacting? Sorry. Well, no, we've already contacted the internal uh, hmm. teams to say, you know, can you tell us what the current position is? If we've got an affected customer, can you restore from backups? Can you check you can restore? So, because then we can, ransomware is ineffective uh, if they haven't got to the main backup 
but if we've got root certificate compromise, which we don't know if we've got or yet, then then you so have an issue. You must have got some news about ransomware. We didn't know about ransomware. <laughs> oh no no, we, we've had one customer come back and say they can't get access to their data, and they've had a ransomware. They've got a ransomware attack. So okay. I mean, we're, we're waiting on the information, but we've got a phone call. So I think that's going to become more common knowledge. So um, let's assume we have at least one customer, and this looks like it's getting more serious. This is just a DDoS attack. Okay. So while we're waiting, uh, and you know we don't be sitting on our hands while we get the restore, uh, we we check on the restore. We'll find out what that result is. Um, what do we what do we what do we think about cutting off the customers? What do people think about that? I think uh, it uh, yeah. If it, uh, we should analyze uh, the time. And uh, we should think also the rest of the customers who still not get affected. If this is continuing, then might be in 10 minutes they will get uh, some uh, major customers again will get inf impacted. So probably it, it is good idea to, uh, to send some general communication to everyone and say just be careful or some uh, uh, instructions to them what they can do to prevent this or uh, just uh, to show them that we are working on it. But we still need them to not uh, make it public yet, don't okay. we? So I think you absolutely have to do the internal discussion before you do the public, but they've got to be quite closely linked. So I've, got a res I've just had a question from the blue team to say, Shall we revoke, revoke the root certificate? Um, because uh, SOC believe that root certificates are compromised. So just to, you know, going back to uh, Satari's um, uh, you know, third point about business impact, if as a cloud service our root certificates are compromised, we know we've got a very serious situation on our hands. So um, I don't know what people mm. think, but my advice would be that we immediately basically shut, shut down the service. What do people think? Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yes, true. Yeah, but I, I forgot but what was our service. It depends because if, for example, it is uh, needed for some uh, uh, first need actions, then you cannot shut down that easily. Yes, on the way. So, um, so we need to prepare a very quick response now. If we're going to revoke certs. We need to we need to go a very brief message out to the initially to the admins. But then also through the customer team, we need to get a um, a, a standard um, a standard message going out to all the CEOs. Um, you know, from your customer team, uh, have you got? The, can you protect eighty percent of our revenues? Who, can you identify the major customers? Ours was yeah. a, sorry. Yeah, Angel, do you want to do that? I was just going to say that ours was the user forum, so it wasn't like a transaction um, channel. It was a forum, like a chat forum. Is that what it would be? User group? Yeah, you're Share. a customer user group, I thought. So I basically, yes. you're the active customers. And normally out of 100 customers, you might have at most 20, 30 who actually are active on those things. But probably if there are, uh, again, with these startups, normally you get some keystone customers that are the, the real anchors. And we're assuming mm -hmm. that one of those is compromised. Okay. Okay. So... Um, Given the timing, I've now asked, um, I've asked the, the SOC to revoke the certs and, um, uh, and then to uh, also give us a, a read back as to uh, how many accounts they can restore. So we need to work out you know, what the cost of our ransomware is going to be. So if, if, if let's imagine there's been some lateral movement and they, they haven't gone to all the accounts yet, we've got partial partial ransomware then mm -hmm. we need if we, we're, we're doing the, the right thing which is cut off access to the accounts the next thing to say is what's the financial impact of that on us yeah by the way i received some more um some more customers saying they've lost all the functionality through the platform okay mm. so so i would add another another strand of this for the technology, a request back to technology, which is to say, what's the minimal service they could safely get back up and working? So let's assume we've revoked the root certs. Then the next thing would be, how quickly can we get back um, to for that business continuity? Or do we do we really want to go 
back up because we haven't handled this properly yet. So I think we need to be proactive and even maybe think about shutting the service so that yeah, yeah. Sorry, get we, out, we, of, we, out of hand. We effectively have shut the service. We've just revoked all the re uh, reserts. Yes, we have. So that but means anyone who tries to to um, uh, get admin access can no longer get ad admin access. I don't know, you know, if we have any inform information about whether the service is running, um, but we're saying, um, you know, so. We're just looking at so we're just looking at how we control this. Uh, there's some more information coming in. <laughs> yeah, there's. And normally, you know, I've got to say, if you've been involved in these things, there's a lot of confusion, and you find that the people that shout loudest aren't necessarily the worst affected. Mm. Yeah, they're the spoiled ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, or the ones who knows that they can take attention. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, just as a team, uh, we're still waiting. We've we've asked them to re revoke the root certs, and we've asked them to tell us how many you know how many effect you know how many can we restore because then we know how many we can't restore. Um, and then we uh, we've also asked. Um, I think it's worth starting up a strand. Let's assume we get past this. We've got to be able to restore a running commercial service as soon as we can. So. That's Tari's point. Uh, Siobhan's point. That the, if you're if you're um, if you are up against an SLA, the sooner you can get some minimal service back, the uh, the less commercially affected you are. Okay. I mean, everyone knows that the you know attacks happen. It's your response uh, from a company point of view that's important. Uh, and and what we're going to be fined by the ICO. Okay, so what we haven't had any feedback yet from the so we put our in our five priorities. We said first of all, let's let's get the technologists running in the right direction around mm -hmm. cutting off access, which we've done with the root, root certificates and working out what the ransomware is. And we've now we're now going to ask them as to what's involved in, in asking them to break out our team and start looking alongside. The other problem I found in these scenarios is that everyone runs towards a fire and you burn out all your resource trying to do the same stuff. You need to reserve some people to say, if we were going to restore a service, what would it look like? What's a minimal service come back? So you need to break people out. And, and then you've got some people in reserve because if this runs for 24, 48, uh, 72 hours, you're going to end up in a situation where um, people are too tired to think properly. Okay, exactly. And I can see the breakout rooms and there's like the customer and the management group is around 10 people. The red team is who are the attackers, one, two, three, four, five. And blue team, who are the defenders, they're only three people. So, <laughs> so can I, it's can always I ask, like that, yes. Can I ask if we've got some, some people here who are more technical, um, if they could volunteer to be transferred to help the blue team? Because normally, in I resourcing, yeah, in a resourcing uh, point of view, hi, Dider. I was in blue team, but uh, I don't know how it came here. Oh, well, Dida, you can transfer. I'll move you over. back. Yeah, I can, <laughs> I can be on the blue team as well. Yeah, so, so let's let we suggest that we can take two or three people out of this team and put them because we're only management and put them onto the oh. blue team. Then we, we'll, we'll get a better response. Mm -hmm. But again, this is for me, this is part of how when we're responding, you need to make sure that you're very clear what your priorities are in the business. Um, is it worth just, I don't know who here is representing the customer user group. Do you want to make up something about what you've heard? You know, or just, just, you know, bring some new information into this. You know, we normally, if you had a really well prepared war room, you'd have, you know, uh, something pop up, but can you, whoever's, whoever's, uh, on point for the customer team, do you want to come back with some new information and then we can feed that back to the rest of the group? Okay. So Angela and I, we can, uh -huh. uh, we can maybe create, I can, a new room. Or we can both go back to the main room and we can uh, uh, talk mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But that means I won't be able to do recording here, Ben. Are you recording as well? well I think the recording is still running. It should still be running. I, I, I've got the recording running okay. continuously in the, in the breakout room. So cool. if you want to drop off and, and put some more yep. information, that's absolutely great. And we'll continue just going through the next stages, which is, down our work list, unless we've got anything added, um, in terms of uh, what we're going to do to communicate with customers. So, 
Um, it, we'll we'll see you and we'll see you in a minute if you want to bring some more information back from the front line. Yeah, take me with you, Dida. So you say leave from the right uh, bottom okay. hand side, and then just leave breakout room. Don't leave okay. the meeting as a whole. <laughs> okay. The customer team we came back here to talk about uh, the stuff that we need to do, um, and I we have been seeing some uh, really. Um, angry customers um, more and more uh, because you know how we the root certificates were revoked yes it meant that um, they can't get access to yeah. what they need right so they have sounds like customer like what sorry yeah there's no access to some customer environment so they're pretty uh, angry yeah sounds like when that what was was it nationwide or tsb who were under attack sounds like that sort of and people couldn't get things from their they couldn't get their hmm. their um get to their accounts couldn't pay for anything i can imagine um so so the what, team um, Yes, so we shall give our teams a script to read back to the customers because we're getting more and more um, um, calls from uh, from them. Mm -hmm. So far, we have like two dozen customers um, calling back. Mm. So I think it will be best to give this script um, to our customer agents so that yes. they manage it in a in a more consistent way. Yeah, absolutely. So what what are you saying that we have to write a script or no no we're just we, saying we, we, oh, we're saying we, yeah we're uh, we've given it to them okay let's say <laughs> yes yes it's <Yes>, okay <laughs> yeah. we have to the, handle the, the the fallout somehow we have to we have to have we have to have a line we have to somehow make everybody feel that we're doing something but not tell them what we're doing. Um, and your team has just come back with the report saying three of the customers were, were our major customers. Oh, wow, so right. Maybe, so. maybe we should um, start thinking about what we should do for those uh, bigger customers, like a, a task force or working group. Yes. Assign someone specifically to them so they have one person dealing with all their uh, queries yeah they have a yeah one a go-to person okay. let me just write these down uh, you broke up there i didn't hear that yeah, i just muted myself so that I, I i'll be typing so i hope it doesn't disturb no, it doesn't bother me okay So they want a single point of contact. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. our, something to do with our legal team. I yeah. don't know what they do. I don't know what they do. I've never been through this in my life. Very informative, but I'm just guessing. I'm trying to remember what we learnt the last time on the um, preliminary meetings with uh, these two guys. What they talked about, how they would how they would deal with the situation. Are you, uh, trying to find my information. Are you there still? Yeah, I'm. I'm here. I'm here. Hmm. <clears throat> so technical teams are doing lots of um, things to um, counter the attacks. Mm -hmm. But it seems there's still no um, contact from the, the attackers themselves. Okay. Um, head up three breach, cyber hygiene, making a case to the board of directors. Um, 
what are we going to do as well? Because this something's happened at my company. I haven't heard anything about it. All I know is something's happened. Everything is recorded here, so don't <laughs> talk. No, 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 I'm not saying that's why I didn't say the name. Yeah, yeah. But um, what we are doing is an awareness campaign mm -hmm. within the company. There is a cyber awareness campaign going on. Well, obviously. Uh, yeah, very trying to make sure as many people um, know how to use the equipment, how to be aware, how to see when there are attacks, phishing attacks, how to report it. There's something going on. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's that side of it. We're, we're dealing with the fire out there, but also um, not everybody inside the company will know that we're under attack, I imagine, but we need, the tech people will, but we sort of need to we need to know we need to know that our own internal staff our own company is aware and educated and what it's sort of aware in the sense that they think about what's happening um and if anything if 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 they notice anything they immediately say i'm going to do something about this and they tell uh, they tell yeah. somebody they tell their their, uh, their their own security managers or or, or, or forward or, something to yeah, some forward some to someone yeah. they don't just say oh that looks suspicious and then just carry on with their job so the back end we sort of need to get a move on in making sure that everybody in our organization is part of security for the company yeah, as well as security responsibilities. Exactly. Hi guys, um, management. Somehow it went wrong. Hello, management. <laughs> good to see you. Always. We're just talking you. about awareness campaigns. Great. Okay. Just a question: Are, are all our customers still with us, or they le left us <laughs> because <laughs> of them? <laughs> well, they are very angry, but. Um, well, we will give the we will give the update. Well, you, once you'll give the read back in a minute. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I just give the thirty seconds brief as where management are? Uh, just, uh, just give them five more seconds. Uh, not everyone's back yet. Okay. Okay. They're all coming back. I think everyone is back now. Yes. Perfect. Go ahead, management. So, so just to give, uh, you know, from the bridge, what we said is that we've given the impact. We think 24 customers were affected, of which three were major customers. So we briefed the customer team to call first the major customers that were affected and then the remaining major customers directly. So we're going to, and the briefing we're going to say is, here is all we know about the current situation. This is what we're going to do to fix it. Um, and, uh, you know, try and get them to, to stand up a team on their side to respond so we can manage the incident together so they're engaged. We're still waiting on an assessment that's coming back from uh, you know, uh, what, the, what damage limitation looks like um, from, the, from the blue team. And then the remaining 21 customers that were affected who are not so important and the 75 that we don't think are affected, um, we want to just uh, send an email out, a bulletin, because we obviously we're gonna put a message up on the portal that says uh, what's happening. That's quite good. <laughs> and the last thing we've said is that um, we have a concern that we're going to burn out the technical team if this runs for 48 hours. Um, even if you're coffee fueled, you can't do that um, uh, for sustainably. So we're going to break out some of the technical resource and get them to thinking about, uh, get them to start thinking about what is a minimal service that we could recover. What's our our plan B? So let's assume that we're going to devote some of our resource to fighting and some of it to preparing for after the battle. So are we getting, are we going to get some um, external resources maybe to support in this uh, period? So we haven't yet done the full business analysis, but I think given what we've, um, given that we are being overwhelmed, that we probably need to uh, get some specialism, uh, specialists in. So um, James, do you have any recommendations for specialists? Do you have people you've worked with that can, can uh, step in? 
Uh, I've got a few people, but they're currently not available due to time zone issues. Okay, right. So I think uh, I think we've got the checkbook. The check is 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 written, but we um, we haven't got anyone to send it to yet. So Dina, I think we're we're saying that we one of the communications we're going to go back to our major customers is to say, as well as getting their sec teams involved, is we're going to get some external specialists to help us. Yeah. Okay. Good plan. So from the customer. Uh, I'm going to start calling this customer services because this is what we have been focusing on. Uh, we have uh, assigned specific uh, point of, points of contact to those major customers and we have been in contact with them. And for all other agents, uh, since we have been getting more and more calls, we have uh, written a script for them to uh, be more comfortable talking about what they need to talk about and be consistent. And uh, that's uh, really what kept us busy because it's training all these people is uh, it does take time. Okay, uh, we've been responding to things. So as you know, since you authorised the action management, we have revoked all of our root certificates. So we've no longer got access to mm -hmm. customer environments. Um, shortly after that, we looked into activity logs and discovered that a number of admin accounts had been created on customer environments uh, we cannot revoke them or remove them as we no longer have the access needed to do so uh, on top of that while the platform is now locked down so that there's only any network traffic between our office and the AWS environment that contains it the team did discover that there was some file creation on our internal file servers uh, suspicious file activity. Thank you. That's all good news. <laughs> all right, cool. Should I, should I do our bit now? Yeah. So, so basically, so um, what what you see from what we've been doing is that um, you you're going to see um, that the customers themselves. Uh, have started to be attacked with ransomware. This is this is the end customers, right? This is not this is the users of the email system, right? So the users of the email system have started to be uh, attacked with ransomware. So they start to receive all sorts of ransomware files uh, coming from a number of internal employees. So it looks like there's an insider job because the emails are being sent from you know let's say forty accounts spread across the multiple companies um so basically they're, they're an internal email with ransomware being sent to the customers so uh, we've now gone from 24 users to 40 users who oh. are affected yeah if you want to yeah yeah so no 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 this is not the users 40 affected. email accounts no 40 this email is... accounts across 24 customers great no, no no so okay if you actually want to see that i'll probably say no you probably have 600 or a thousand email accounts right receiving emails from 40 email accounts right so okay. the other news is we've been trying to contact some of the technical team um who would normally would be available and we can't get access to them so okay. well you know they've, they've gone offline so we don't know what that is so here's a bit more uncertainty um which could tie into the insider so just rather be more data here you will see traffic for those 40 accounts coming from Ukrainian IPs. Not necessarily that one you saw, but you'll see, you'll see traffic from Ukraine to those 40 um, email accounts that are now internal. Right. Okay. So, so what you've got is you've got internal emails basically sending ransomware to internal emails, right? Which basically increases the probability that some of the customers by now, we'll have client-side ransomware in that environment. So just to help the, the business team, the management team in their next round, um, what's, uh, we're going to have to go and do some business impact to look at the financial impacts here. Yeah. Um, and obviously, we need to prepare a statement for the investors. Can we get an estimate of, uh, do we think we've got total loss on three major customers and 24 uh, customers? Uh, or, or is there a chance we might still be able to restore? So if, if we're a well-organized cloud company, we would we'll have had regular snapshots of our, of our uh, data being backed up to a, uh, uh, a non-editable uh, store. 
uh, with separate accounts. Have we got that in place or is this something got overlooked in the technical build? I'm talking to James here. So we will have that in place. Obviously the, the root access will be no use whatsoever, but we could restore back a couple of hours, uh, which would be before we detected any activity. Okay. So in terms of when we go back through our scenario, we're just trying to work out, we think we still have a way out of this, but we're not, we don't know for sure. So our communication did our back to the customer. It's got to be quite nuanced because we need to be upfront. Um, obviously we've got the, the red team in the room here, but we need to be quite careful about what we say. So just to be clear on that though, that does not necessarily resolve issues with customer environments where our platform was used to create accounts because we, we cannot people. revoke those accounts without access that we no longer have. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And then remember that by now you actually have, if, if some of your customers don't have good ransomware protection, right? You're going to actually have a, a number of those thousand accounts now have their own ransomware incident. So um, are we going to, um, I don't know if there's any more information. Are we ready to, to step back into our next, uh, yeah. next round? And from, I just want to also from our side, as soon as you guys put that thing on a website, we'll know that you detected the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah, so we did discuss this in the management group, which is we, why we wanted to talk internally first. As soon as we start putting out comms, then you alert the ransomware attackers and we're likely to, they're likely to accelerate. Yeah, but I don't know that at the moment we, we still haven't uh, deployed it internally. No. We, we, so we, we're using, we're going to the outside because you know, that, that's, you know, and, and at the moment you don't know if, 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 the, if it's an insider job or not, right? No, exactly. Because, because one of the, the reason that, you know, you can have 40 is because two or three of those accounts could be real. And by got, two of those three could actually be malicious and the others could be framed. And we've got two potential insiders, but they might just be in the pub. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Should do round four. Round three. Well, I, I call round one the first one. Okay, sorry, round three. Sure. <laughs> From the attacker be? point of view, this is round four, right? Because the first <laughs> move was done by the attackers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'll see you. Back management team. Hello. Yeah, we Hello. Sounds, sounds like we got a few uh, a few people have run for the exit because uh, they're so they're so uh, affected by the by the. Uh, scenario so, <laughs> okay. so um i i think we've got a, a more serious uh impact than we thought we had um so at this stage you know i, I think we probably we fired off our shots obviously we're gonna we, we're gonna put some resources on to communicating and tracking and, and keeping people up to date um, um normally i think there'd be an escalation if um if we find that one customer is getting really annoyed then uh, we need to go back. We, the, the, the thing, uh, uh, we've told the customers we've got a problem. We've got to make sure we've got a solution for them. So we've de devoted some resources to, to the solution, whether that's um, restoring data, whether that's getting control of DDoS. Um, the thing that we can't do, uh, and we didn't realize when we asked the technical guys to re revoke the root certificates, um, that we wouldn't have access to their data. So there's been a miscommunication internally. Um, which, which has meant we've now, we have no uh, further access. That's not what we expected. So that's something to talk to the, the, the blue team afterwards about. Um, but uh, let's talk about what we would do in terms of impact analysis, because I think at this stage, um, given we've, we've alerted the investors, we made a, a personal phone call to the investors, we need to tell them the, you know, what, um, we need to put the right spin on it, which is here we are responding, it shows our plan is working, um, but we, we need to work out what the, the butcher's bill is going to be, roughly what we think the, the impact of the, the, the costs are going to be. So I think it's time to contact our insurer as well, because I'm, gu I'm guessing they will have a PR company that they can uh, mm -hmm. put us in contact with, because we, are, we know marketing, but we're not very good at public relations. We don't have the expertise in, internally. Okay. So um, this was our kind of priority five. We said we'd have a press release. So. I think this is where we've talked about getting specialist resource if we can to help on the technical side. We've got um, specialist PR as well that need to be uh, able to firefight this uh, when it gets out. So in terms of our, our, our kind of um, the, 
let's assume we've got finance in the room. We've got to put a war chest together as to what we're going to spend on this stuff, given the, the investment round that's coming up, uh, what's prudent for us to spend. So we need to make a call on how much money we're going to spend on PR and how much money we're going to spend on the specialists. Because when you ring someone up and say we're desperate, that normally adds a couple of decimal points to the bill. I bet. <laughs> okay. Um, second thing is we just need to work out um, what's our, our hedge. You know, what's our, are we burning through an insurance layer? So we already know we've got our, um, you know, there's a minimal cost. You know, we've, we've, we've kind of got our excess that we've got to pay initially for stepping into this. We know that's burnt through already. What's the upper limit of that? You know, have we got, have we got a sophisticated cyber policy? that has levels of insurance that says as we get to, you know, to our main liabilities that we can cover it. Um, we also ought to think, I think, uh, think about um, how we estimate what our contribution needs to be um, for our customers in terms of their cyber attack. So we probably need to let the, uh, the cyber insurance guy know who the customers are and so we can get hold of this, their, their insurance details as well. Because normally insurers tend to pull this risk and speak together. Should we also contact legal or uh, it was already discussed? Yeah, legal is involved, but there's not much they can do at this point. They check the contracts and yeah, we're doing all we can to keep yeah, the so, customers happy. So so at this stage, we're going to put our, you know, this is a 50 man company. So let's say we've got a small management team. We've got minimal kind of uh, central resources around uh, analysts and so on. We're going to drag the business analysts we do have into doing some modelling uh, with the finance team of what the uh, the impact and, uh, is going to be. Do we do we know what is the worst scenario that will happen? Let us imagine that uh, one of the customers that are annoyed will leave. Are we discussing this worst case scenarios or that's well, not the worst, worst case scenario? Worst case, <laughs> the worst case scenario is a global pandemic and a war between the US and China. But let's not go there. Um, <laughs> At, this, at that stage, cloud services are no longer important. So I think what we, we probably need to do is just, um, uh, if you, uh, my experience in <laughs> modeling is just take the information you've got and work out what the next layer is. Because I think we've got our plan B team hopefully working on a mineral service restoration. Let's hope that's, a, the, that's the right thing to do. But um, well, what we've said so far, we've, we've dedicated resource to impact analysis. We've contacted the insurer and... We've, we've also asked the customers to contact their insurers so we can group those together. We've looked for specialist PR uh, advice and we've also got a, a checkbook open for James to get to call in his uh, buddies and get some more uh, uh, resources. I guess the other thing we need to start thinking about is, um, so that takes item five kind of off the list at the moment. Uh, what do we think about the authorities, about who we have to contact? So do we want to talk to a... Um, a cyber crime uh, branch of the authorities is there is there personal data involved um, what do we need to do so we are not very sure exactly if that, if that that is the ransom. Thinking. yeah that's ransom what kind of but yeah go ahead Andrew. <laughs> angel talk talk <laughs> okay hear me i was just yeah. thinking yeah. Are we? Are we? Are we really an? Um, are we a critical? Uh, we're not critical, but we do provide identity services to these uh, companies. Company, company. What's our? What are we offering? What is it? What is our talk to the government? My script kid is. Uh, this is multi-cloud management services. So oh. what we're doing is helping a group of SME customers. So we're not enterprise but we may well have an impact on some essential services across those SMEs. So just going back to the authorities point, um, who are the authorities that we think we might need to contact? Connection. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I think like uh, we have to inform the information uh, commission, uh, commission as well, as because, uh, so that is, uh, there might happen a breach as well because of ransomware the data are being taken up so it is uh, what i uh, from my point of view i am thinking that okay uh, we have to inform the information commission as well so we've got yeah. ico we, uh, we're contacting uh, these are the authorities yes. oh, um, and then we also want to talk to them there must be a criminal arm law enforcement we should be talking to as well 
Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like um, fraud you, action, some something or yeah. Let's assume that some of our uh, our companies, given the current COVID crisis, are in essential services. So mm -hmm. we 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 probably need to talk to the government department that um, are reliant on their services because we may then get some more um, uh, uh, help or financial support for this this process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Right, so just going back to our five points, we've, um, we've cut off access. Uh, we, we don't know the impact yet on the, on the companies. We've got a team running on that minimum, minimum service. We've put some communications out now. Um, so we've, we've contacted the major customers. Let's, let's just consider what's been the feedback from those major customers. So I don't know if someone um, wants to, did if you want to just come back and say, what of those three, we had three major customers that were, we know are affected, and we've got uh, 21 that were minor ones that were affected. So um, what feedback have we got from the ones we know were affected? So they're, they're quite angry, but they also, uh, they're waiting us for, to, to come back with a solution. Yeah, so what we, when we talked to them, we said, here's the situation. This is, we've told them what our solution is, that we're working on a minimum, that we've cut off access, and we're going to do a minimum restore, um, and um, that we're going to, uh, we've, we've asked for their resources to, to kind of uh, join us, so that we are, we've got an inner circle, we've expanded our response team to include their, their staff as well. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, we also probably need to have someone from legal, um, uh, uh, someone from legal uh, to, to kind of supervise that, is what we should start thinking about. And uh, Satira, uh, I, I, I know what you said before. Uh, we, we're probably at the stage now, and now we know we're gonna be into some sort of penalties, um, which is, uh, we just wanna make sure that we aren't, uh, we're, we're careful about how we manage those customers. I've, I've seen customers um, be quite uh, bad in terms of thinking of their own selfish uh, reasons for establishing us as the criminal in this. Um, so we just need to make sure that we're, when people are, when we, we start expanding the circle of trust outside of the company into customers, we've got to be aware of what those communications are. Mm. So, yeah, and even though initially they were really angry that something is happening because we were quite proactive and um, transparent, they are, uh, they look more cooperative. And now that we have engaged their uh, insurers as well. Yeah. It's looking. So, the, do they believe in our solution? They just want us to fix the stuff. Great. So the clock yeah. is running. We're maybe two or three hours into this. You know, they haven't lost faith with us yet. So yeah, we yeah. believe, from a, as a management team, reading back to the technology teams, that um, uh, that we are. You know, we 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 are we're managing the situation. Obviously, depending on what the real impact is. Mm -hmm. Um. Just one question. So we've got this virus spreading with internally. How do we handle that? All right. um, how, I mean, our internal customers are being affected if it's going, if it's spreading internally. So I think what we said is the malware has been dropped. So let me just read back what Dennis said. I think Dennis said that the malware has been uh, on inter on our on the internal office file servers and in the customers. So one of the actions is going to be to clean up internally. Um, but um, I don't know what we should do. Um, uh, what we should do about in, uh, in internal. So we still don't know. We've still got two people missing in action. Whether they're uh, uh, in the pub, I, I, I think we are going to be able to. You know, they, I think James has said we're ready to rejoin. We've kind of got a. Uh, an accelerated cycle here, but they've got more information for us. So okay. shall we shall we join back? Yeah. See so you guys yeah. back in the room. Right. Cool. So management as always is first to the party. <laughs> <laughs> Because others are working. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Man, I, I, just I, call, I, I call this work, Dida. I call this work. 
<laughs> if, if talking is working, yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> oh. No, it's the strategic stuff. It does involve a lot of talking, but it, it is crucial talking. Yeah. yeah. We have. And it's also, you know, I, you know, what we haven't had normally, there'd be a much more of a back channel. We've got a, we've got a kind of a Slack, uh, a Slack running as a team, but normally there'd be more communication directly. So in my experience, what you do is you put someone on point uh, in the management team to uh, talk to the technologists and someone on point to talk to the customer team. So you've got, you've got that link read back. Um, so, uh, yeah. so shall we just give, uh, you know, management always first to the party. Shall I, um, Shall I just give us uh, give the team where we where we've got to? Yes. Yeah, it always sounds good to me. Yeah, so we've, 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 decided, well. we've decided we know there's a problem. So what we've done is we dragged one of the technical team and um, our the business analysts we do have into doing some uh, impact analysis with legal, looking at the contracts. We've contacted our cyber insurance provider and we've talked to the major customers and asked talked to their cyber insurance providers as well. So we can get them to work as a group. We've um, got some. We've we've given James a checkbook for when he can find his buddies to to dive in and help. And we've also uh, contacted a PR agency. Uh, obviously, once we tell them there's a disaster, there are two decimal points added to the bill. But um, and we have we've decided that we probably uh, that there's been some personal information compromised. So we need to talk to the ICO. We're going to contact law enforcement and. Um, given the current COVID situation, we've got some of our our customers are in essential services. So we've gone back to, we've asked them to uh, put us in touch with the government department so we can uh, get the, the leverage from government to do this. Our customers are, are fairly angry, um, but they believe in, in our communication. We've told them what the situation is, as we know, and we've, um, we've given them a kind of... Um, uh, uh, our work around what we're going to do to deal with the situation. At the moment, they, we feel they believe us. Oh, and by the way, we still can't contact the two missing um, technical people. They may still be in the pub or they may be the insiders. We don't know. So that covers customer part as well. So, James. You're on mute, James. Too many mute buttons. There we go. Right. In blue, we've prepped some advice for customers. So we've got a list of the accounts that were created during the suspicious period on their environments and instructions on how they can delete them, nicely packaged in CSV format from our reporting, how to revoke any new certificates that have been created for their environments, and how to lock down environment so that it can only be accessed from whitelisted IP addresses. That's been sent to customer service and management for a decision on what to do with it. On top of that, we've got a notice out to all employees of Acme to not click any links, open any attachments, and report any emails which are even slightly out of character. Um, due to the fact that we've got the root certs revoked, we're essentially in investigation and advice only. There's very few actions we could take, but there was one last minute spot by one of the team that we actually have the full activity logs and job history for our platform. So for some customer environments, we could actually replay the jobs to rebuild their environments if needed. That's great news, James. How do you get on on this minimum, uh, minimum service? In other words, we've, we've basically shut down our service. We're going to restore a service. How's the team getting on with coming up with that, that uh, plan of action if we're kind of building from ground zero? So the advice there is turning on MFA and limiting user access to the bare minimum with whitelisted IP addresses. So essentially locking it down as much as we effectively can. Uh, then we do need to go out to customers to ask for new root credentials to their environments, which might be a hard sell. And any joy in finding those two guys that were in the pub? Yep, they're on their way in. Right. So, uh, do we have the evil laugh, Dennis? <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, actually, I, I think we. Um, think if I can sh share this. I think there's just one little thing I'm going to remove from here, um, because um, I don't want you guys to know this just yet. 
Um, well, you know, but the rest of the crowd don't. Let me just obfuscate that for a quick second. Oops, not that. Um, all right, so basically, so we lost access to the, um, the main admin interface, right? Because you guys, uh, you know, the, you know the, the same way that you, you, okay, cool, I got it. The same way that you guys lost access to that environment once you, once you kill all the roots, right? So that was a good thing, right? So from a, it's a good example of, you know, being a bit radical with, with killing accounts actually works, right? Because we, we lost access to, so can you guys see our screen, my screen? Yeah. All right, so we lost access to the main admin interface, right? So we only have, we only, right, in brackets, have access to AWS and Azure, which is that list of, of so James, in fact, I remember correctly, you gave the customers, right, the list of stuff to delete, right? Yes. But they haven't done it yet, right? That's on the customers to do. Correct. So, so what we did meanwhile is we killed all the AWS admin accounts that we could, that we could see. So, so actually what this means, uh, now here's the question, who owns the AWS accounts? Is, is your, uh, the the, the okay. billing for the accounts will be with... So the CFO. Yeah, it's, it's through us. Yeah. Have we contacted AWS? Have you contacted AWS? Nope. So you're going to have to now. Because they're the ones who, they will be the only, basically, if you guys killed your accounts, and we just yep. killed admin accounts, the only people that will be able to get in now is AWS. Yeah, so yes, we'll need to contact AWS, and that will be, okay. yeah, through the CFO. Do you have so the number for Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> That's your next move <laughs> for you guys. Uh, so the other thing that we've done is we have triggered the ransomware. So we have contacted you. And what we've done was we, we deleted and disabled as much as we could the cloud trail and cloud watch logs. And what we've done was we deployed the ransomware on the code commit that you had on the servers and on the ECR, which is the container registry images. And we put all those encrypted in S3. And then we deleted that. So that means that now, in addition to all of this, you had a bunch of websites go down because they are the ones running inside the containers. And we gave you a nice Bitcoin address. So we sent you a message saying, hello, here we are. We just encrypted all your source code and all your um, uh, container images. And now, uh, you know, if you want them back, you have to pay us. So, so um, management to technology, I can't believe we don't have proper backups, but um, uh, how can you give us an assessment as soon as you can as to, you know, how effective uh, does this affect us? Um, you know, have we truly lost some major customers totally? So the answer is uh, no, we probably haven't. We do have snapshots, but of course, those snapshots will have been removed in some cases. So where the ransomware has been fully deployed, yes, we've essentially lost those for now. And it's a case of okay. rebuild or ransom. It's interesting because, you know, that cloud, you know, that, for example, that code commit, right? This is, this is a good example of how good is the deployment, right? Yeah. Because if you have good, for example, Git and, uh, and copies around, right? And you have a good deployment, you should be able to rebuild some of those images. The question is, can you? So, and so in previous uh, instances, I've given legal counsel a uh, YubiKey, and they're the only ones with access to a to to write to an account. So we're we're reading all the changes out to it. So because the legal counsel are incompetent on AWS, they couldn't do anything if they wanted to. But I don't know if we've got that situation here. Uh, we're we're a relatively mature startup, so it's extremely unlikely we've got that sort of governance in place. So this is, this is uh, CGO has root. Hopefully cool. changes his ID when he does a release. Yeah. Right. But okay. this is a, a good example though for why you actually want the, um, the security team to be running on a separate AWS account. Yeah. Um, and I, I saw this, I think it was the guys from Etsy had a really good session where they, they also realized that having that uh, you also gave a lot of isolation because they, they had copies of logs that in a way, even, even in, if the main accounts start to get compromised, they were still able to go back and understand what the hell was happening. So, so Dennis, I mean, I, I think, I don't know how many more rounds you want to go through, but like, it feels like we're probably in a situation where we, we can now, we've got more clarity about what's actually happened. Do we, mm. want, to, do we want to go away and then talk about what the, the end game is the review or are there more surprises uh, I, come? I think we could talk about the end game now because really the moment that ransom hits 
and that's the next move from the red team that's where it just opens up and we decide what to do a blue team is essentially hands off there there is no activity we can really do without the involvement directly of customers or somehow re-establishing access to customer environments and we can't do those things well i think you should right i think this is one of those cases where you know by definition right you you are more mature than the customer right so yeah you know, oh yeah no no it's it's something that we would definitely want to do but yeah. we've not got a way to play through that and replicate that yeah. so that I, I would say that would be dropping blue team into the larger wider team um to just contribute there so into management and customer so shall we do a shall we do a kind of an end game scenario in each of the rooms now with and you split the blue team across the other rooms and then we could then come back for a final conclusion all right Sounds good to me. Great. Okay, I'll uh, I'll see you all guys on the other side. Sorry, <laughs> who am I putting? Which team? So you're splitting the blue team one per other group, and then the management team are reconstituting as are the, the other teams. I'm still not clear. What am I doing with the blue team? Uh, split, split them up between the other groups. Let okay. let them get a chance to see the perspective of the other teams. Okay. Great. I'll do that. Oh, God. Thanks, Dida. You got the toughest job. Yeah, yeah, clicking. Even worse than <laughs> ransomware using Zoom. <laughs> yep, opening all rooms now. Cool. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Hello. All right. All right. So we're in the end game now. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, I, I guess we've got, uh, we haven't got total information at the moment, but we feel we have a way through it. What we don't know is at the moment whether we're still a viable company. So um, if we haven't got sufficient cyber insurance, if we haven't got, if the, the other, uh, if our customers' insurers aren't playing ball and look at uh, pinning all the blame on us, um, then we have a, we could have a serious funding problem. Let's imagine that, that it isn't game over, that we are going to be able to live to ride again with some damage. Um, I guess as a business, then what we've got to say is, what do we, what do we need to do uh, uh, to sort out the, kind of the, uh, the current situation? I, I don't know if we're clear from an attacker point of view. We've got ransomware. Um, shall we follow FBI advice and pay the ransoms? Or, um, no. <laughs> no. I think we have to defer that to the cyber insurance people. So a bit like James was saying, from a management team, I think we've got to now uh, make the offer of resource, keep them all on high ground. But at the end of the day, um, we've got a personal decision to take about our company. Given the insurance situation, the fact we've cooperated fully with the authorities and with the customers, um, we also need to, uh, we, uh, I think we need to let them take their decision as to what they're going to do. Because we get to a point in this situation where um, there is, uh, there will be different perspectives. You know, they may, have decided to play hardball and be recording every conversation we've had and are preparing a case to sue us. We don't know. Any other impact from anyone? From the investor point of view, so hopefully so, how we handle this and their um, view on us and our, like from this incident, we can become an even stronger uh, company. Yeah. And don't forget, these are potential investors. So we may well have some current backers. What we're talking about here is um, the Series A round investors. So we'll have a, a financing team who are raising the money and we've got um, uh, potential investors. And what we, we're needing to, to play back here is our resilience. Um, normally in a exactly. diligence exercise in that Series A rounding, those, those uh, investors would get their specialists or an external company to talk to the customers and just see you know, how do we actually react? How do we respond? So I think one of the other things we need to do is do a very uh, forensic um, uh, catch of all the information and review everyone's performance because I think there's, uh, you know, uh, what we're selling here as a service has to include some element of secure by design and the, the ability to react. So we need to look at the, our resourcing. Have we got enough resources? You know, James, you made the point we didn't have um, hot standby uh, extra resource. Do we need to pay a retainer to keep um, those resources on tap? 
Yep, preferably to me. <laughs> exactly. That is your brother and your sister, yeah? <laughs> I don't have a brother. We okay. do need to be very objective here. So um, it has been a chain of events. And so some part of it, only one part of it is, is our uh, fault. It's, I don't want to say fault. I don't it's all, it, we know it's all Dennis's fault. fault. We know it's all Dennis's fault. <laughs> So, because Dennis was so good, we're now in in the situation. Uh, yeah. If we handle this very well, uh, we might even end up with uh, put more potential investors because our name is there as a company who's resilient and who's who has a good yeah. handle on on things. Yeah. So I think we've made an assumption that that um, that we did the right things and we did the right things early and we communicated. Um, I don't know, James, if you want to. Um, uh, confirm but do we don't think we have an insider um, an obvious insider that we had some some laggers who were in the pub but we didn't have anyone who is um who went rogue yep. no no one went rogue uh, the closest we had to an insider was the initial infection vector which was a uh, it spear phishing email so so the other thing that people really want clarity on forensically is to say you know, do, do we do we have a chain of custody here? Can we be sure in terms of what we've done in terms of catching information that it hasn't been compromised? Everything was on Zoom. <laughs> Everything was on Zoom, but uh, from a blue team perspective, no, we did not have a forensic resource. We do not have a legal chain of custody. We do have evidence, but it would be, it's not as strong as would be ideal. But then um, we're not an IBM, we're not an AWS, exactly. you know. So, so given the, the the level of our service, we've done appropriate measures. I'm just I'm just trying to yep. work out how we read it. Back. We've we've not tampered with anything. So timestamps and any file integrity measures will be fine. Uh, when the insurers come in, they should be able to pick up from where we are and carry on. Great. Okay. And in terms of resource gaps, in terms of as we, you know, when we go back and we talk to the investors or we make our future plans, uh, what do we think we need apart from those hot standby advisors and probably a, a warm press release? Um, what, do, what resources does, from a management point of view, um, uh, you know, what, what do we need to, what do, we need to, to do? Uh, we need a full security review of the platform. We need yeah. a security architect, a good one, to be involved in that. An external the, one. Yep, because the platform is fundamentally, it's got a lot of single points of failure in. I, I know because I built it that way. Okay. So, so we've got to remove single points of failure. We do an external review. Um, yep, and add additional controls. It may add, be your baby, but it's an yep. ugly baby, yeah? Also, also uh, multi-tenanting. Okay is a problem so yeah. all of the customers sitting on a single tenant disaster waiting to happen right i have a little suggestion if i can go yep okay so we have uh, from uh, the blue team uh, perspective if you have uh, extra money we can hire an external company that uh, that is doing um, uh, malware analysis so we can maybe we can set something for for uh, that we lost so they can do a manual analysis check the code check the logs and maybe they can find the the, the decrypting key for our data great and, and going forward you know james you're just talking about policy i think we also need a an external review of our policies and our training to make sure that the all our staff know how to respond and we probably need to have also a uh, an individual review at least with the major customers and um, by webinar with the other customers so that we can we can confirm where we are in our in our accreditation our certificates and our security approach should we get any official certifications yeah that sounds good i mean i i, I think we need to basically map against those we need to map against those certifications so we've got equivalents so you know the problem is you're looking across our customer base we've probably got um, you know, 40 different standards we need to apply. Um, we just need to look at equivalents. At the end of the day, they're all based in the root on um, uh, ISO. So uh, uh, has anyone else, I mean, hopefully this has been a useful exercise for everyone in the management team. Has anyone got any other points we need to put back into the end game? 
Okay, maybe we can, we have to think about the compliance to be complied with the, like uh, ISO 27001, uh, just to be uh, to, to, to compliance with our business uh, processes and everything yeah. and the answer the company. Yeah, and in my experience, ISO 27001 and 27002 are great at high level, but they are not um, industry specific, they're not platform specific. So when you actually look at the advice in those documents, I've got them up in front of me, coincidentally, um, you probably need something a bit more tuned to an AWS well, uh, well, well architected solution and an industry best practice to the sectors we're in. So the implementation guides will probably be much more specific than that high level. Um, I guess from a regulatory domain, we also may have uh, some of our customers in a regulated space, and then we just need to make sure that the what we've got from a policy point of view is equivalent to those. So maybe we should get more compliance people then. You never need more compliance people. <laughs> you, you need more people who understand compliance. That's right. Um, I mean, my, my recommendation to a company like this would be you need a security expert who's independent of the company and does mm -hmm. a full audit and determines what standards are appropriate. Given the way it's a service provider and the type of customers they're focusing on SOC 2 is going to be a ideal one because it's one of the most rigorous and it's not a point in time so I, however I, it's not a checklist standard so it's not easy to get to so my, my other advice would be we're going to ask uh, to see if we can get a non-exec at a board level that it comes from a proper security uh, position so maybe they've been involved in a security startup or they've, they've you know been a, at a major company so that they've got the customer's perspective. So we need to have, uh, I think we need to review who our, our non-execs are on the board if we're going out for that funding, because again, something that investors will look for is, do you have the right depth of experience at that advisory level? Yeah. So we should also update the playbooks, update uh, policies, which you already mentioned, and uh, maybe do more uh, incident uh, scenario exercises so that yes. we are more prepared even though we handled it pretty well. So, uh, getting some red team exercises rather than just in, in scenario tabletops, actually mm -hmm. running through some things, well, similar to this instant. So just making one other suggestion here, which is all the, you know, you can button this up tight, but we need to sell more as well. So I think we, one of the other things we need to add in based on the experience of the customer contact is we need some security aware salespeople that can really understand the customer requirement and make sure that when we're writing contracts, we're doing it in a way that doesn't expose us to further risk. Mm -hmm. And we have to, uh, to implement an awareness program for our uh, employees, so the employee is always the weakest link. So, uh, yeah, so James gets at least a packet of crisps and two pints of bitter. All right. Are we heading back into the main room soon? I think we are. I, I think, think we're, we're ready to go. Covered Thanks, everything. Last minute. Good work, and everyone. Obviously, we've got the full post mortem coming up next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Manager back on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> We really needed more beer in that room. Yeah, more beer, yeah, more virtual beer. Let's see where the other group is. Okay, they're still discussing, discussing. They have 20 seconds. They, they've just gone off to attack the next company now. <laughs> they've they've yeah. moved on already. Yeah. I wonder if they do blameless postmortems in the attacker world. There's never a blameless postmortem. I was going to say, it's probably not blameless in the attacker world. It's, it was your fault. Here's the concrete shoes. Yeah, there's a corpse and a smoking gun. <laughs> whoa, whoa, this escalated quickly. What? <laughs> yeah, no, we're just talking Oops, about what we're going to do with the attackers. <laughs> we're, we're about to have a few, I don't know, maybe a few hundred of those if this goes, no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. No, so, no. Shall, shall I just do the, the management reback as to where we got in our end game? Um, so we decided that we, we need to make a few changes. We're, we're assuming that we're not, um, we're still viable financially. We're assuming that 
the combination of the actions we've taken and the cyber insurance covers us. We live to ride again, um, albeit slightly damaged, and that our customers stay with us. Because otherwise, this is a very short conversation and everyone is um, heading off to new jobs. But assuming that that's the situation that we actually have survived and the yeah. attacker was great but not, not brilliant, um, then what we're saying is we, you know, the experience we've got is we've got to make sure we've got advisors on hot standby so James's buddies are and uh, is ready to go at the drop of a hat. But we probably have a, a hot standby on 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 a cyber advice. But we have a a warm PR statement ready ready prepared. We need to. We haven't got full chain of custody, so we've exposed weaknesses in how we do our logging and how we make sure that, that is uh, non-editable. Um, we need to get a full security review with an external architect. Again, that's the checkbook is open for it. Um, and James has put his hands up and said that when he bootstrapped this thing to get us started, he, he had obvious single points of failure given our financial constraints. So we need to look at removing those. And one of the key ones is the multi-tenant piece. Um, we've also talked about you know, looking at our customers and what we're doing. How do we map against the different certifications, the different security frameworks that are important to our customers? We're going to need to add someone on uh, as a non-exec to the advisory board that is comes from a, a direct security environment or has worked in that role in a major company. And we also need to strengthen the sales team so that when this ha happens again, we're able to properly respond to our customers. And uh, we, we, um, we with the with the our blue team in the room, we decided we need to be a bit more rigorous in our uh, and a bit spend a bit of money on red team exercises and security training across the company. So that's our, I guess, our wrap up. Cool. And it's just us now, right? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, actually, let me show my screen. So, since you guys didn't pick us up, we, um, we did the final move, right? Which was this one, uh, which basically, is that uh, we also deployed ransomware in S3 buckets just to wrap it up nicely. And then what we did to, to finalize, we, we introduced a political angle. So we basically said that we're doing this in support to Ukrainian civil, life, civil rights organizations since you guys found our Ukrainian IP. Which, by the way, it was an hour, so we're just routing traffic to it. And then we actually provide some, a, 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 you know, a number of Bitcoin addresses that are actually from public uh, Ukrainian civil, um, civil rights organizations. And, um, and of course, some of the others will go to, to the attackers, right? So the logic here is try to basically disguise the whole thing as a, a, civil, a civil right set of activists from Ukraine that happened to hit the UK company uh, almost as collateral damage. Um, the, and, end game, um, the end game what? being social engineering people um, towards being enemies with Ukraine because they think that Ukraine's actually attacking the organizations in those areas. So Putin's been paying Facebook again, huh? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but, Great. Yeah. Fascinating. Cool. So, really good. <laughs> Great. Good. I Meanwhile, mean, we've got to wait for it. Sorry. Sorry. I just said, meanwhile, we got away free. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I don't. I think you know we had to make the conclusion in the business team that we were damaged but not sunk, um, because I think if you're sunk, then everyone just runs for the exit. Um, uh, so I think we've we've assumed that it's more interesting if you are able to continue is still viable, um, and uh, the lessons learned that then uh, in the readback next week is a better a better message to give us the things you can practically do. So. So the nuclear option is, um, you know, we did discuss on our on our, our thing what the what scenarios we should plan for, and we said a war between China and America and a global pandemic weren't were the ones we should put in there. <laughs> <laughs> but but actually, look, it's, it's realistic what you said because I think on this case with this kind of a compromise, the the solution would be to rebuild the environment. Literally, you know, it would be like your customers would be offline for a week or something, and you rebuild everything from scratch. And you can do it because you got the code and you got the environment. And if your customers are supporting you, right, then you can weather it out. 
you know, I, I've seen literally this happen with, you know, with the big supplier, right? You know, it, and it was a week offline, but, you know, for, uh, the customers also had vested interest in the thing to, to go back to the way it was. So they weather out, the, you know, the, the impact of this. I want to know how, how does anybody get to you? I mean, you're, you live to fight another day and you just go back and hit somebody else in, in the UK or anywhere else who's a bit weaker, less, less financially, um, I don't know, independent, secure. So you're There's always just... going to be a target as long as it isn't me. <laughs> but that, that, wow. that, that's been one of the problems, right? The problem is that we, we have, for the last, you can argue, for the last decade, right? We, we have been, you know, our, our insecure environments, our lack of maturity in technology have created a generation of criminals that are getting away with it. Wow, right? yeah. It is literally that simple, right? And, and, the, and, and the biggest defense mechanism sometimes we have is that there's not enough of them, right? Because it does take skills, right? To pull this off, you, you have to be good. You, you need to develop a tip on the other side. You know, this is not something that you do you know, in the back of your ba- you know, bedroom. Like, you know, these kind of uh, ransomware activities, they're not done by amateurs, right? They're done by oh, professionals. Nice. Well, it, it's, it's, it's professionally developed and criminally funded. So that's the problem. So I mean, criminal corporations. Yeah. Hmm. So, you, you know, you, if you actually look at some of the, I don't know if you read the recent article in Wired about the guy who blocked the, the, um, the was it war cry? Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and basically, you know, that was a very lucky uh, escape, but um, it shows that there are, there are people who are choosing as a career not to go into being a quant on the Morgan Stanley desk or a dev that they're they're actually uh, end up drifting into criminal uh, you know professional development for criminally organized mm-hmm. um, exploits look some some ransomware teams have the best customer service right and the best the QA out there not being funny right you know the, the, if you think about it, from a ransomware point of view there was this really cool funny article where this guy was saying that his mum got hit by ransomware and he had to get a bitcoin and he was struggling and he found himself talking by the chat of the ransomware with this person on the other side. And they were super helpful. And he was like, oh, I need another day because I need to go there. And they're like, okay. And, and, they, and he found himself thanking them and saying, hey, you got have, and then, and then when he paid, they send the key and everything worked. And the guy was like, this is insane. This ransomware has best, better customer service. Customer yes. service. <laughs> than most of the other stuff in my life, right? But why? Because they have to support that, right? They have to have, they have to handhold, you know, their, their customers, right? Which is like the people impacted with the ransomware. But also there's a very interesting balance, right? Like, so if you look at why the prices for example, for ransomware are reasonably low, when you think, you know, they have so much, they could ask for a lot more, but they almost want it to be at the point where, you know, it makes commercial sense for you to pay. So, you know, like for you, you know, if somebody says, you know, what if five or 10 or 15 pounds, um, and you get your, your mom's photos back, right? And that avoids you having a massive nightmare, right? And having to deal with it or, mm-hmm. or having your mom now or your brother now mourning for the rest of the next couple of years, their lost photos or less files, you probably pay, right? And the same thing yeah. with a lot of businesses. There's businesses where, you know, it's either that or you don't have the data or you go under, right? It's, I think it's very easy for, to say we never pay ransomware, but the bottom line is there's times where you have to make a business decision. And the 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 scene on on that has changed uh, dramatically in the last year. So they're not just uh, ransoming you for uh, decryption keys. They are getting the, exfiltrating the data and threatening you with that data. Yeah. And the amounts are (laughs) not doubled, not tripled, not quadrupled. They're astronomically changed. Yeah. Yeah. But there comes a certain point for a limited company where you close the doors and walk away. And then, you know, from a, a back to Dennis's point, that's not sustainable for uh, ransomware teams. They want you to survive and continue. Yeah, but we've seen this all before over many, many generations. This is a, it's a protection racket. Yeah. You do not rob them out of existence because then you can't rob them again tomorrow. Yeah. And, and the biggest thing that I feel that we, we need to do, and that's why I really like, you know, I, I like I like Ben. You're plugging in to say how you map to multiple standards. That was a good one. Um, is that 
at the moment, like, you know, when you look at five or 10 companies, you have no idea how they would recover or respond to something like this. And I think that's wrong because if we did that to our food, for example, we wouldn't accept that. We wouldn't accept that our food chain, for example, our suppliers of the, the food that we eat didn't have good standards, didn't have the ability to recover, had no idea what was going into the, you know, the, the, the multiple part of the supply chain. You know, but we do that with technology, right? Like you, you look at five companies and you have no way of understanding which one is completely flying by the seat of their pants, right? Which one has decent backups and which one actually is doing a great job, right? But isn't that good due diligence though? Uh, well, I think a lot of that is asymmetry of information. So none of us knew about horse meat in the beef supply chain yeah. until it was public. Uh, when someone did the genetic analysis <laughs> and then suddenly, yeah, everyone has a very different view of that mouthfeel of the burger. So, um, it's, yeah, but the good uh, news I think it's the software. same for cybersecurity. Yeah, but the good news, I remember that, that analogy, and I remember thinking, yeah, but at least on that case, you're able to go back and understand all the type of meat, right? In software, you have no idea, you know, mm -hmm. if, even if it's meat <laughs> further down the line, right? Yeah. But, but look, right. you know, the, 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 the thing also here, right, is that, the, um, and you talk about due diligence, but there isn't, uh, most due diligence is still done on bad data. Right, most due diligence is done on on, on quasi marketing exercises because there is no there's no good standards and there's no legal responsibility to provide accurate information. Right. right? So you know, yes, you know, if you're a good security team, you start to do due diligence and it's, yeah. it's good to catch companies, you know, and you can force them on certain paths. Yeah. But, but there isn't a lot of good standards that you know we still have and we're able to visualize. Because look like from a management point of view, right? So this company's management now is much more aware of security and probably going to invest more in security, but they also need to be rewarded for it. They need to have, you know, like a which kind of rating, star rating from, you know, zero stars to five stars on how they're doing, because that matters too, right? And, and I think this, in this form, we've probably had more security expertise than you normally get. So normally you have, you know, the... Uh, the management team and the sales team and the customer team, the customer facing people won't have the level of understanding about, you know, the, what we're doing is right. So, you know, we've compressed this into a couple of hours, but normally over the time period, you'd have, um, there's some, there's some internal positioning as well. So we've been quite cohesive as a management group. In my experience, when these things actually, ha actually happen, there tends to be a little bit of divisiveness and a bit of um, poor feedback. It would be very interesting to see this done by a company with the same random allocation to teams. <laughs> I'd love it. Yeah, I think that would that would that would uh, open a lot of people's eyes. So, um, so I mean, I don't know, uh, Dennis, what we're planning for the the read back, but I, I guess we're gonna we're gonna um, do a kind of a quick sketch of what what we talked about um, yeah. and what the scenario was, and then the response was, and at the end of it, we'll do the full. You know, we'll open the kimono and do the full reveal. So what do you guys think of the exercise and, and the model and, and how it worked? Uh, it's fun. That's all I can say. <laughs> Great one. Thank you. Informative. Cool. I, I, I think that the bouncing of the, the evolution of the, the story worked quite well, right? I mean, uh, I think, you know, probably from my point of view, if, um, if we talked about, you know, the cards, and I think if we'd had a few more, a bit of randomization in terms of outcomes, we were... You know, between us as a group, we were driving it, but I think some element of potential scenarios, which then were, were randomly, you know, information feeding in randomly. It doesn't need to be anything that technical. It just could be a almost like a uh, set of monopoly cards as to what, what yeah, happens yeah. next. You, you could almost replace the red team with a, a set of cards, just a deck of cards for different stages of it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. at this point, they do that. What do you do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because normally you don't. I mean, I've I've talked to CISOs that have been directly talking to Red uh, to uh, to the uh, attacker, but um, normally there is an there's there's not much communication. Um, yeah. Whereas so I think having having the attacker play back as a um, uh, you know as a series of random events, you just got to be aware of roughly what your starting point and end point, and also what uh, what I've seen in these exercises, people. You know, make some really um, uh, opaque uh, judgments about where it's going to play out, and 
having some idea of randomness in there prevents that. You know, you've got to expect you're going to survive at the end of it. Otherwise, why continue with the exercise? You just bail early. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, usually it is being more closer communication with technicians. Here we were uh, a bit uncertain in the beginning from a uh, technical team didn't ask a lot of consult. So there were only three people. Yeah. Yep, we were, we were underfunded. We needed a bigger budget and more resource. Uh, excuse me, I have a question. So uh, do we have to trust those uh, ransomware guys or not? So if we decide, for example, to pay them to, to get back our data or something like that, maybe they can give us our data back, but maybe they, they, they're going to keep a copy and uh, uh, make some, something with uh, later. Look at that face. How can't you trust that? <laughs> I'm I'm the one that kept the copy. <laughs> yeah, you're not but showing your face, Wallaby. Yeah. But that, but that, look, that that's true, right? I, I think that's that's one of the balances you need to do, right? So one of the balances you need to do is if you pay, you know, what are you paying for, right? And so I've seen some cases where they they paid for some things because they're the things they couldn't recover easily, and then the rest they rebuild from scratch, right? But also, you know, even, even, you know, in the kind of typical attacks, right, what you get is that, you know, you, they, they, always, they start small and then, you know, so you kind of know that they can decrypt the data. The problem you have is you don't know which data they have copied and it's outside your control. So, so usually in these cases, you can, you, you can pay to get access to data, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, you should accept that the data has been compromised. Yeah. And you have to accept that that data might be copied in a bunch of other computers. Hence a clean rebuild, that, that, yeah. that second yeah. strand that takes resource out. Because in my experience yeah. also in these scenarios, which we haven't seen in two hours, is people can keep going for 24 hours and then they start making bad decisions. Oh, yeah. So whenever I've been in a continuity or a cyber you know, incident, I've always reserved some capacity because you think it's as bad as it can get. It, oh, yeah. it never is as bad as it can get. And I tell you, tell an instant curveball. I was involved in an incident that we, we thought the incident had wrapped up. We, we killed it, we high five, everything, everybody dismantled, and we get called literally the next morning. And, the, and they, if you Google sell your story to the UK newspapers, there, there's literally companies out there that, will, that you can sell the story. And guess who was trying to sell the story <laughs> to those guys? They li literally got caught, the, the attackers. Yeah. Oh, nice big brand name. Literally, brand names. You, you think, how is this like, you know, how many ethical lines are being broken here, right? So these guys are basically speaking to the people who the only reason they have that information is because they are the attackers. Literally, the only ones, the only ones that could ever knew that of that details is the actual attackers. And they were basically trying to sell the story as like the final revenue stream from the attack. So they, wow. they, they, they milk it, you know, they, they basically, they did whatever they could, right? By the time, you know, when we closed all the doors, they went and going, hey, cool, you know, let's, let's, let's try one more revenue stream. Wow. Now, I, all we do, I know I've got the solution, we just declare you would be a terrorist organization, Dennis, and then we're done. <laughs> oh, no. No, we, we're basically claiming to be like, um, you know, a, a, a civil rights activist, right? To yeah. throw the curveball in it. And, uh, but that's but, to throw you off the trail. We're not even yeah. over there. <laughs> exactly, we're, we're, we're over here. And, yeah. um, I was just thinking about something with these cards. Um, you recall, um, uh, some of us have, were there earlier on in the, uh, in the training sessions when someone brought up um, these other cards from old. Um, oh, well. This kind of reminds me of that. And it's, you know, if used as kind of a, I mean, this kind of gives us the outline for a type of game using using those cards that we were all talking about like making a uh, a game out of these playing cards or, uh trading cards that were made by a wasp representing mm -hmm. different um characters of you know different types of teams um we all went and made characters it just kind of made me think about that like um the idea had come up for a game I think that that would be a cool thing, to do a game out of this, yeah, yeah. So if we look I mean, at the outcomes of this, you know, look at what the, the, the readback is when we do our wrap-up, then I think there's definitely a kind of a, a, a playbook and a scenario that would be very useful for people to take back to their organisations. But then maybe there is a suggestion that there's a, there's a working group that puts together a game that takes this and then 
turns it into a, I mean, it's not a high tech investment. You don't need anything that's, that's online, but I'm sure there are some frameworks you can do that very, very easy generate those cards that could be used. So I once was doing this event, which I was part of it, and I was, I was just the, the user, but I, I really liked it. It was basically this guy who had a game, kind of security, but I, I, never, I never know what happened with it. But it was really cool where he gave you a scenario, and then he gave you 20 points, and he said, you have two sprints, and you have 20 points in your sprint. So now here's 10 things. Right, and each thing cost four, three, one, five. So you now had to choose what you did, and then the logic was depending on what you did, things will happen or not. Right, so you could choose in this case to kill off the accounts. You can choose to do backups. You can choose to increase your logging. But it was really cool because there was that sort of this takes you four points, that takes one point, that takes you know are you investing in this? And uh, it was a really cool way of doing it. Because it's more real world. It's like a sprint planning, right? Where you get X points to play with. So then, and then you have your cards and then you got your action on the other side. Yeah, kind of like a, so, um, almost like a D&D type thing where, I yeah. mean, we'll notice that like in, the, in what we just all went through, the, the red team often has a little bit easier of a time um, going through um, and, you know, doing, doing their attacks versus, you know, the, the, the blue team and management or the customer service, um, you know, that are all kind of responding, um, for, for the red team, they're, they're kind of the ones who have the element of surprise and, um, but putting that, all of that into a game like this is really cool. Like, so I guess we probably shouldn't, shouldn't make sure we don't cover the full, uh, read back session in this, in this, uh, session. Now I've got to drop off, but, um, it sounds like we've got some really good, um, good information for next week. Yeah. And look, good, good session. Like, and, and I think, you know, when you look at this, right, the bottom line is that this was just an idea that we had through a bunch of sessions. We never knew this is going to work. And I actually, I, 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 I'm convinced now that this, this is a great, it's probably a much better way to do instant simulations because it felt a lot more real. Like I, I actually felt that even when we're making moves, like suddenly we lost access to this and we lost access to that. So it felt a lot better than those scripted tabletop exercises. I don't know how you guys were feeling in your rooms, but you know, it was a lot more interesting. Uh, it's somewhat you, stressful in blue team. I think you do need to have someone who's like the moderator. Normally yeah. when you have someone who's a the moderator, they bring a degree of unconscious bias. And back to James's point, if there's some randomness in here, so they're turning a card and saying, this has happened or that's happened. You can have, you know, two or three cards being played out and there'd be a mix of things that, happens to security, happens, happens to the, the blue yeah. team, happens to ops, happens to customer, happens to management. That would be quite realistic. And you could then, you know, you, depending on what your, your sector is, you could put different elements in. Yeah. But I, I think in giving people who are in the security community um, something they can go back and replay back through their, uh, in their own organization, I think can only help improve quality. Yeah. Sorry, think, guys, I'm going to have to drop. I need, I need to jump too, but uh, it's all good. Dida, any final comments from you? Very good. So the recording and any associated materials will be on the site. Check back in, in a week or two, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. We are still working hard on them. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Cheers. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye -bye.